Welcome to Park Center High School for Northwest Suburban Conference Girls Basketball. It's an all Brooklyn Park matchup tonight, the Champlain Park Rebels and the Park Center Pirates. Hi, I'm Jay Wilcox along with Patty Sorensen, the former Park Center head coach. And Patty, new coaching staffs for both of these teams this year. They met earlier with Champlain Park winning by 10. But I think both teams have changed a lot since then. It'll be an interesting night to see, you know, just how much they've both grown. Well, I agree. I think it's like the, they played early on in the season, like you said, and I think both teams have gotten time to adjust, get new to the new coaches, the new uh, systems. I think it'll be really exciting to see how it goes. Both teams coming off really close games the other night. For Park Center, it didn't turn out in their favor at Centennial at a, a two-point loss. Meanwhile, Champlain Park coming through with just their third win of the year. They got a two-point win over Osseo, so they're feeling good about that one. Well, I think so. I think Champlain Park really, you know, got it going for them. They were able to pull that win out. I think Park Center also saw some things they really liked, even though they lost by two. Some things they think are manageable and fixable. Let's talk about key players to look at in tonight's game, starting with the visiting Rebels. And S Savannah Belangia has come on this year and done some nice things for them, leading them in scoring. Well, yeah, and I think one of the things Coach said that she really likes is how coachable she is. By that coachability, she's being a leader. She can shoot. But she's doing some amazing things for him, and she's just very impressed from what she's seen out of it. A lot of young talent for Park Center, and we're going to talk about a player that really impressed us in our previous TV game in Armstrong, Jalea Diggs. Oh, a little spitfire is what I'm going to say. I mean, she, she's quick. She can disrupt on defense. She can attack the lane, get the ball up, shoot. Hey, she, she's all over the place. Fun to watch. Should be an interesting matchup, as we said. The Rebels winning by 10 on their home court. Park Center looking for a little payback here tonight as they try to continue what's been a pretty good string of games for the Pirates. Champlain Park and Park Center girls basketball will tip off next here on CCX. Welcome back as the crowd meeting the two teams here this evening. And uh, you got a lot of young players on both these two teams, too, Patty. So, I mean, I think maybe, uh, you know, game by game, you're not necessarily seeing them look the same every time out. It's all part of that, you know, consistency thing and finding their roles within the team. And it uh, can be nerve wracking for a coach at times, I think, but it also is really exciting when you see things growing with these. Uh, both as a group and individually. Oh, I definitely think so, especially with when, like you said, so many young players. I mean, we're seeing in a lot of games now, a lot of seventh and eighth graders contributing and, and looking at them earlier in the season to now to watch their growth and development and how all the puzzle pieces fit together for the team offensively and defensively. Take a look at our starters for tonight's contest. On the left is Champlin Park with Aaron Caluza Jr., Natalia Tolentino, Savannah Belangia, Mariah Pates, and Naomi Kushan, who formerly played at Park Center. And for the Pirates, Anaya Shafa, Lyric Singleton, Naomi Callan, Brenna Foster, and Morgan Sanders. They've got a couple that have generally been starting that are going to be coming off the bench here tonight, too. So as we said, uh, brand new coaches in uh, both of these programs here and just kind of getting everything established too they've both got a fair amount of experience but uh, new to their respective schools here singleton and pates will jump it up and we are ready to go here Tip controlled by the Rebels, and we're underway. Rushan looking to drive and attack, and a layup attempt wouldn't go. Singleton out of there with it for Park Center. Rebels switching on those handoffs out high. Singleton was fouled as she cut between a couple of defenders there. 
And looks like they'll get the foul against uh, Tolentino. Well, you know, that's one thing that, that Coach said for Champlin was that, you know, we wanted to, you know, play, be, be more consistent, okay, and more, more learning and be more consistent. Improve their rebounding, take care of the ball, she said. In and out on Shafa's attempt. They get another crack at it, and this time Blanja with the rebound, and the Rebels looking to get a run out. Layup is good for Kaluza and Champlain Park on the board first, and they'll come with some three-quarter court pressure. Pirates able to beat it, so back into a 2-3 here for Champlain Park. Pates the rebound of the miss from Foster. Grushan, nice dish off there, but it hits the bottom of the backboard. Then Belangia gets to it, had it blocked. Singleton running it back. Grushan slapped it away from her, though. And then a turnover back the other way as Foster up with the interception. You know, one thing both coaches said, I think they both like man, but they said they're not afraid to play different defenses and see what matchups they need to go with. And we're going to see that tonight. Bounce pass to the edge of the lane, knocked briefly away, but Foster recovers it. And a three is banked in. And that's Sanders hitting it. So Park Center grabs the lead now at three to two. Inside to Pates, have it ripped away by Singleton. And then it's off a of foot though, and back the other way we go. That's one of the things I've seen sometimes. It's like, especially with some of the younger players, take care of that ball when you see that opening break, but you gotta take care of the ball. The cutter is Pates and scores with the left hand. Nice timing on that interchange. She got a high screen and then no wasted motion went right up into her shot. Foster driving it, but missed, and Pates bounced it on the end line as she tried to control that rebound. Tiana Lloyd will come in for Park Center and Miriam Alawanle as well. Singleton thought about it. And this time she will take it and bury it. Lyric Singleton. Coach Coley was saying she's been coming on with her shot and she knocks that one down. Six to four Pirates. Yeah, he's got a couple players now that he feels confident with their shot at the three-point line and just some of their overall shooting is improving. Melangia catching in the lane, no good, but she'll shoot free throws as she's fouled on the way up. They've done a pretty good job of finding some cutters. And Foster will pick up this foul for Park Center. Foster had a big night against Centennial. I think she scored 25 points the other night, so they don't want her to get in foul trouble, and they want her to find her touch, that's for sure. Free throws good. There's Tyler Coley, first season as head coach here at Park Center. I love the, the shirt. Yeah, that is, that is sharp. Nice. And Blondia gets one out of two, so a six to five score. By the way, the last foul actually was on Shafa. I read the hand signal wrong, 3-2 rather than 2-3. Little runner for Shafa, wouldn't go there. Pates has done a good job on the boards early. Grushan looking to attack, and we're gonna get a foul on yeah. Singleton on the, she made the pass off. She kind of was going, not too sure, but yeah, she kind of was riding her a little bit, pushing a little bit on her. We saw in that Armstrong game, Park Center looks, likes to get after it defensively, which can lead to you know, some fouls at times as well. But there's Singleton up with a steal as Pates had to save that one in. Lyric Singleton trying to go all the way, no good. Lloyd though grabs the rebound. 
Foster, a step back three from the top, wouldn't fall. Grushon out of there with it. Whose foot did this hit? It's going to be Park Center ball. Yeah, off of Naomi's foot. I think both teams turning it over slightly more than they would like in the early going here. De definitely not a start I would have wanted to have of turnovers like that, but you know, they got to settle in. And Alawanle found some space to go to the hoop and Pates is called for the foul. I think she was surprised when she caught it at the high post just how much room there was. He's like, I'm just one-on-one, -on -one. I'm gonna go to it. I agree, here you go. Nice yeah. job turning back the other way. Pates actually read it pretty well, but then just came down with the hand. Not a lot of size for this Rebels team. Pates, they list her as a guard, but really doing much of their inside work. Yeah, she was she was big inside last year. I remember watching her play too, and she was leading them in post-ups and things, so. Seven to five, Park Center. Tolentino drives and kicks. Crucian from the baseline, bounces around and out. Pates the rebound. Singleton blocked it. It'll stay with Champlin Park. Just seems both teams are kind of struggling to find their rhythm right now. It's just kind of very choppy and see who can get into the flow of the game first. It will be a big determination of tonight. Tolentino back over to Crucian, this time driving it down the baseline and will be called for the carry. Ran into some traffic and kind of tried to find her way around it with a little uh, carry of the ball there and the official spotted it. Pates is long to yeah. be on top of that press. They got it over her though. You can get your big to be that active, especially with their wingspan. That, that can be troublesome for a team to break a press like that. Shafa, step back three here. This one bounces around and drops. Pirates, all three of their field goals are threes, and they lead it now 10 to five. Lundia, back cut here, and the nice. layup is good. Nice that timing nice again, seat. Tolentino scores it. You like it when your players can see that and, and make that cut and effective and, and, and read. Alawanle well, lost the dribble briefly, but stayed with it and gets the layup as they were kind of out of position defensively. And even with that little bobble, she was able to get pretty much all the way to the hoop. Don't you think it's almost like the defense thought, okay, she's losing the ball and they let up a bit and she, she just stayed with it. Crucian dumping it over to Pete's. And then nice dish off and the layup is good for Kaluza. Rebels have been able to get some nice finds and some assisted baskets. Malawanle answering at the other end with another bucket. You know, if they can keep that up, if they're going to keep this press up and, and, she, and she can get in the middle like that, they, they're giving her the wide open lane. Bouchon looking to turn the corner. Nice dish over to Pates. Left hand is good. Her second basket. Boy, the offenses have started to click a little bit better now. It's kind of like they left Pates all alone down there, and she, she saw that and took advantage of it also. We've seen that on both ends by the bigs. 14-11 Park Center. We get a timeout taken by Tyler Coley here on the Park Center side, seeing some things that he was not hoping to see from his team there, so you get the timeout. And Get over and talk things over. They're certainly playing better than they were earlier in the season, it sounds like. Gosh, when we saw them against Armstrong, they got 98 points in that game and just pulled away and dominated in a game that we thought might be a toss-up. Yeah, it, you, the speed that Park Center brought and, and the confidence in attacking. And even then, they were changing. Remember, they were changing. They were pressing, then they were pulling back, pressing. They just mixed it up a lot. That was a, yeah. Saw a different type of a Park Center ball there with this team this year. There's Leslie Phelps in the middle there for 
Champlin Park taking over her first season as head coach. She said, well, everybody's learning and adjusting and, and you know, hadn't had the connection to the program before. And, and she noted too, first female head coach that the Rebels have had in their program as well. And had uh, done some work at Maranatha and at Bloomington Kennedy, Minneapolis North, AAU ball. So she's excited to be at Champlin Park. Alawanle looking to attack again and gets the layup to go. Boy, they have found a matchup they like, and she scored three quick buckets. In for Champlin Park now, Reese Hagenbart, 33. Also 23, Alana Bates. Bates, shot fake, drives it, goes over to Hagenbart. She traveled, yeah. yeah. Atlantis Brown is in now for Park Center, handling right here, number four. On the one light, we thought about going all the way again. Now she's going to kick it back out. They're going to keep working it into her. Turns back to the right hand, scores again. Oh, my goodness, she is on fire. Now she was our key player last game and didn't have a real big game. She's making up for it tonight. Yeah. Well, and she's doing such a good job on both sides of how she's taking advantage of the backboard, knowing where it is, knowing where she is on the court in there. Nice dish into Hagenbart. Oh, it's going to be a travel. No good. Looked like they possibly might have an and one coming, and instead it's a, uh, a travel. There's another look at that nice post move back to the right hand. And that's kind of a trend, I think, that, you know, you, you guard the perimeter so much that you kind of just say, well, you're going to have to take her one-on-one -on, -one on the post. And Park Center is just continuing to going back to that. That time, other one they miss, but they have really made some uh, made some hay inside with, with uh, Alawan Lane. I think Champlain Park's had a little bit of difficulty adjusting to what she's doing in there, and, and she's been able to get good shots up. Kushan working her way up court here as Shafa defends her. Rebels down by seven. Kushan, the drive was fouled. And let's see who's gonna get that one. It might be Diggs who just checked in. I think that's <clears throat> one of the issues some of the kids have. They're so quick sometimes at trying to slap the ball away and they're coming across and they get that foul and they're going, but, but what? And, and that's what it is. It's gotta get better position. Kershaw's free throw is good. You gotta believe she's a little extra pump playing against Park Center too. <laughs> you see back in for PC there is Sanders. And Kershaw hits a pair, her first two points. So all five starters have scored now for Champlain Park, but they're still down five. Diggs with it out high. Kendall Jackson's in there, number two for Champlin Park, out on the top of that defense. Here's Brown shooting it up, no good. Lloyd rebounds, oops, and then threw it into the Rebels bench, though it'll be a turnover, and Champlin Park will get the ball back here. 9.42 to go in the first half. Park Center up by five. They lost by 10 the first meeting between the Rebels and Pirates. I would have liked to have seen uh, Lloyd do a little more of a head fake to see if she could have gone up and drawn a foul, but I think she was intimidated by the height she was going against there. Into Pates, and then she'll kick it back out. Jackson, an air ball. So Diggs will inbound in the backcourt. Park Center really felt like uh, the other earlier night, earlier week game kind of got away from them. They had a nice lead at halftime against Centennial and just couldn't quite close it out in a place that's generally been pretty tough to win through the years at Centennial. I mean, I know they're not having a, as successful of season maybe as some of their past teams, but still would have been a good road win to get. Yeah, it would have been great, you know, and it's, you know, it is tough to go up there and play at Centennial. They've got a great tradition. They've been very successful, and it's just one of those places you can walk out with a win. It feels really good. Inbounded to Diggs here. Park Center has gone on a little bit of a drought, but still maintaining a five-point lead.
Biggs, dangerous pass, batted, but it comes over to Alawanle, up and under, fouled by Pates. That's gonna be number two on Mariah. And I, I kind of agree with what you were saying there. Sometimes they're having trouble reading. I think Alawanle is a little bit unorthodox with some of her moves, and she's been able to, to fool them. And that was definitely a foul. Well, and I think she's also gotten better at being Confident in her moves or more, more physical with it, not backing down from the defense right in her face. Perfect on that free throw, and Miriam already has 10 points in this game. Hagenbart will check back in, and Pates is going to have to sit with those two fouls, and we'll see if, you know, if that'll be for the rest of the half or not, which would not be good news for them. Mm, battle for it, and they're going to call it a jump ball, which will be... Champlain Park ball. And I, I, I have to say, I, I think that it looks like an accurate call. It isn't very mm -hmm. often where you see two people grabbing at the same time, but it did appear that they were both in contact with the ball there, so. Well, I agree with you that. And it There's a steal by Diggs. Ooh, and then a little bump, but she got the shot up anyway. Here's Brown turning the corner, no good. And then the rebound taken out of there by the Rebels. Long throw ahead by Bates and layup miss. Follow up though is good on the scoop layup by Lanja. That's her first basket. She has three points. And you know, they're you, within four. You reap benefits there if you hustle back and get back. Don't assume your, your teammate's going to score. Get there. She missed you, had an open rebound, and put it back. And one way this time a little more help defensively. They kick it back out for Shafa for a three. No good. Blanja tracks it down. Valentino trying to get him into their offense. Shafa is out really hounding her. High pick and roll there. That shot too strong from Bates, but they'll get another crack at it. Talentino hits. Tolentino just wrestled that right out of her hands. It looked like it was going to be maybe a tie-up, but. Aluanle wants to go right to the hoop again. A little up and under, and traveled this time. Champlain Park, is, is it just at an help, I think a little more post help on this couple of these that have made it a little bit less easy of a, opportunity inside. No, I agree. It's before Park Center was able to just go one on one and now they're bringing the help. So she's got to work through two people. <coughs> Crucian working her way up court. Well, not for long. Diggs up with it. Fires up a three. No good. And they're going to be a foul, I think, on Brown. Yeah, she grabbed the shoulder of Crucian trying to get to that ball. They're both going for it, but I think she puts her arm out on her shoulder right there, kind of holding her up. And then eventually Krushan pushed back. Yeah. But the first, the first thing was what initiated it all. Rebels to within two here, a chance to tie it up or even take the lead. They have not made a three yet. We're at Park Center. Their first three field goals were all threes. Mm, just able to get it into Krushan there. Bates, driving it, she traveled, I think. Yep. Yeah, good help defense. Diggs kind of got one in the face a little bit there eventually, but uh, she doesn't get a steal out of it, but she sure helped force that turnover. She got good position right in there as she was coming. Diggs is one of those players that if you're handling the ball, you really don't have a fun night with her guarding you, it feels like, <laughs> no. and I mean that in a very good way. She's yes. just good defensively and scrappy. No good there inside, and Hagenbart the rebound. Oh, and there's Lyric Singleton jumping in to take it. He's going to shoot a three from the wing. That one's way off, and out of bounds. It's going to be off of Champlain Park, though, and Park Center will get another crack at it. They've kind of gone cold on threes after making a few early. I think Diggs needs to find one of her good driving buckets to get herself on track here for her offensive game, but... Gowen, you can have her out there on defense. Ooh, yeah, I was Foul gonna on say. Hagen Bart there, yep. Hey, 
they definitely know where Miriam is now and they're keeping an eye on her, but then it's like, you gotta play good defense. You don't wanna get that, what I always would used to call, the foul we don't want by reaching. I think even though Champlain Park gave up some, you know, inside buckets early, I still feel like this has been a good defense to use against Park Center, though. I agree. It's it's causing them problems, like especially now when they're coming down and Miriam got stopped. She's pivoting, pivoting, but she really didn't have anybody get that open for her to kick the ball out, which caused the turnover because she wasn't open. Yeah, it was interesting when we asked Coach Phelps, you know, what kind of defense you're going to see. She said a little bit of everything. It depends mm -hmm. on what's working and. Um, I, and I do like that when a team, you know, a lot of teams just have the, the, the mentality that we're always going to play man or whatever, but uh, you got to use what's going to be effective against a particular opponent, I feel like. Oh, I agree immensely. And it's nice when you see a team that does play multiple defenses and does it well. Maybe a travel there. Uh, Tolentino got an offensive rebound, but then moved her pivot foot. Inbounded to Brown here. The scoring pace crept up for a bit now it's slowed again it's 1917 Park Center they've had the lead for a long time but uh, Rebels have chipped away and pulled within two here's Foster getting a step and was fouled that shot ended up not uh, exactly close to the hoop there I figured no. you must have got bumped pretty good I think coach Coley was a little frustrated I think he wanted Miriam to take that shot at the elbow because we've seen her make that before and she was wide open they weren't guarding her and I think she's got to understand if she makes that shot, that's going to open her up down low a little more because then they have to guard you a little more too. Foster nails the free throw. Blondia coming back in here for Champlain Park. Second one no good. So three-point Park Center lead as Krushan hits the front court here. A little under six to play in this first half. Second meeting of the season. Belangia, open look at a three, no good. Diggs tried to save it, but I don't think she hit Krushan. No, she didn't, so it's, it's gonna be out off Diggs. And I don't think Brown realized what she was doing on that because she was trying to save it, didn't hit her. She maybe could have grabbed that, but. Grushan whipping it toward Hagenbart, but it's off her hand. It gets out of bounds. It will be Park Center ball. I think they were just a little too greedy there. She wasn't as open as maybe it first appeared and just, you know, got it trying to whip it at her right hand, but that's a hard catch too. Singleton into the front court. And one lay, trying to look down low. Here's Brown cutting and gets the layup. Nice recognition by Park Center, and they get exactly what they wanted there. Bouchon sliding it across. Kalusa, that's an air ball. Lanja saved Close. it, but then it saved him <laughs> over off <coughs> right to uh, Champlain Park, and Hagenbart scores on the assist from Tolentino. I think that's where Diggs needed to really know where she was on the court because she had plenty of room, and she thought she was going to lose herself out of bounds, tried to hit it off again, and it didn't work out. Now, right there. Alawanle will turn and shoot. No good. Hagenbart the rebound. I mean, the last time we watched them play, she would make that shot occasionally. And there's a three from the top for Kushan. Her first bucket. We are tied up at 22. Big hoop there for the Rebels. Their first uh, three of the night. Diggs Ooh. getting a pick, drops it off. Although Onlay no good, gets it right back. Had that one blocked, but it's a foul. What did you think? Did you think Diggs had the shot when she dished it off? I thought maybe she did. Foul will be against Kershawn, and the one lay will go to the free throw line. Short with that one, so she's now two out of four at the line. Rebels subbing in with Jada Stanford, number 14. It kind of is looking like they're going to keep Pates out for the rest of the half here. You well, know, I guess it's hard to say that for sure yet, but we right. got 4.15 to go, and they haven't made a move to bring her back in with those two fouls. 
You know, as long as you can keep it close and you're not losing anything of it. Ooh, well now they might be in trouble with their bigs. Hagenbart will be called for this foul. That'll be her second as well. This will be bonus now. That was the seventh against Champlain Park. So Brown will go to the free throw line. We're gonna see a much smaller lineup with Champlain Park, so now it'll be interesting to see, you know, if Park Center quickly brings Miriam back in to see if he can get a good mismatch for them. Brown's free throw no good, and rebound snared there by Stanford. Valentino stepping in, fires, no good. Singleton the rebound. Singleton chased back out by Kershaw. Ooh, dangerous pass there, but they'll yeah. keep it. And, and a steal, but then lost back. Foster then was fouled and looks like maybe a bit of a turn to ankle too for uh, Bates. See an early steal there, but then stolen back. And then Bates, oh yeah, look like she rolled her ankle maybe as she. So there'll be free throws coming up for Park Center, but obviously they gotta tend to the injured player first. And Bates, I think anybody who's played basketball has probably had that happen at least once. It sure yep. looked like she rolled her ankle there. Yeah, I'm kind of curious to see how long Coach Coley will keep uh, Miriam on the bench right now. I mean, with, with this shorter lineup, I mean, she was able to do some things. Be interesting to see. Kind of put her in, spread the floor out, and be, but, but Champlin's playing some good intense defense down there, too, so it's, it's been fun to watch the adjustments that they keep making. And we can see it again here, watch as she Steps, oh, yeah, she, she oh, hit the ouch. foot. Yeah, she hit the foot of Foster as her foot was coming down, and that led to the ankle rolling there. So <laughs> she'll have to come out for now, and, and I, it's hard to say. I mean, sometimes. You can come back in after something like that, but sometimes it's not not something that's going to be a quick thing. It almost looked like she was trying to walk down and just stay on, and it's like, no, no, got to come out. We got to take a look at it. If anything, tape it up, give it a little more support. And I always say that it hurts even more when the foul is called on you, too, yes. right? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Foster missing. Pirates have left some points at the line of late here. <coughs> you know, so I've we stay tied. I think we've noticed that a few times too with some of the teams having a chance at the free throw line and they just haven't been able to put them in. Tolentino yeah. fouled by Singleton. They had another little back cut. And they're saying it was a shooting foul. Yep. Number two on Singleton, Tolentino to the free throw line here. And they're not able to convert on that first one. Here comes Elowanle back in mm -hmm. for Park Center. You know, with Tolentino, if I recall from watching her play last year, if she gets warmed up, she can be a, a very good offensive threat also. Misses a pair though here. Mm -hmm. Brown 
cut off as she tries to drive it. Even up at 22, Park Center's led for much of the half, but eh, it's going to be an offensive <laughs> foul on Ella Onley as she kind of banging into Stanford and got a little too physical apparently there. Yeah, so because Stanford did a good job of just kind of staying with her, and then she got her shoulder into her and sent her back a bit. And I like that she was able to get that done without having to flop on the floor, too. I'm going to say good job, official, because sometimes people won't give you that unless you go sprawling on your back. But uh, that was, you know, just a good job of defending. Here's Brown coming up with the steal. Atlanta's Brown to the hoop wouldn't go. Lloyd has the, re or, um, excuse me, Alawanle the rebound. Now across to Lloyd. She's going to take that three and hit. Tiana Lloyd was open after the offensive board. That was one of the things the Rebels talked about. We need to rebound. They didn't do it that time. Foster the miss after they get a steal. Foster missed again, missed again. She was fouled on the third one, probably the second one too. <laughs> yeah, I but. was thinking that. <laughs> Now they look at cross court skip pass. Nobody's around Lloyd, and that can certainly happen when you know you get an offensive rebound. All of a sudden, people lose track of where their their player they're guarding is, and she was uh, did a good job spotting up behind that line. Well, and and, and before she saw her spotting up back there, um, Brown was calling for the ball because she was wide open in the lower corner, and it was great that her teammate saw saw her partner for the three point. Fisher's created a little bit of havoc on defense down there as they've been trying to inbound the ball. That's, that's huge for her. Foster making the free throw. Excuse Pirates me. are up by four. Excuse me, Foster has created that havoc down there. And makes a pair as they get back on the right side of the uh, free throw column there. 27-22, Park Center pushing the lead back to five with five straight points after the Rebels had caught them. Back cut try, but Foster up with the steal. They've had some success with that, but Park Center kind of learning from the past and mm -hmm. making that stop. Singleton driving it and then kicks it over. Lloyd nearly the same spot and hits again. Nice drive and dish there to set that one up. Eight point lead for Park Center. I love it when kids see that. They got a hot teammate. Let's move the ball, get him wide open again, get him the ball again. They're warm. Let's keep feeding them. Tolentino dumping it inside. Stanford. And we will get a foul call on Alawanle. Her second. I was just about to say good defense, but then I believe the referee is correct. She did bring her arms down over, didn't keep them straight up. I know she felt like she was straight up, but... I think she did kind of extend them out over the shooter. Well, and I think because she also felt she had the advantage height-wise there, it, it just that you could and stuff her, and you're right, I think she came over there too. Krushan back in now for Champlin Park. Stanford misses them both, and again, both teams not shooting as well as they'd like at the line. Oh, a near steal there. Good read by Kendall Jackson, but just couldn't quite come up with it. She did a great job. I don't think Park Center realized she'd been talking to Coach, and she just stayed camp down there, and so she anticipated that was right there. <clears throat> giving it up to Brown. Malonley turning back to the left hand. Ooh, good touch on that one as she gets it to roll home. 10 point lead for PC. She's, she averages, Alonway averages 10 points a game. She's already over that. Under a minute to play now in the half. They tried to dump it inside for Stanford. Park Center got a piece of it. They're kind of, Rebels were kind of fortunate. Kaluza making maybe not the best decision trying to get that pass in there, but it was tipped. Well, Champlain Park had fought back to even it at 22, but 10 straight for the Pirates. They're going to apparently take a lead into halftime here. Bruchon on the drive and was fouled. 
Sometimes you just kind of need to put your head down and go <laughs> and see if you can't draw some contact, and they did. Well, and you, and you kind of wish your defensive person would have seen how she if, could anticipate and read, because how she turned and how she threw it up, the odds of that going in that time were, were not in her favor, but she drew the foul, which gets her right, right back at the line. Grushan three for three at the line, which is a better percentage than pretty much anybody else has uh, been able to do muster tonight <laughs> for either team. It hasn't been pretty at the line so far. And of course, miss is just as we say that, but 40 seconds to go. Pirates lead is at nine. Here's Foster from uh, the wing, no good. Although only had the rebound and an unfortunate travel there as she ended up falling with the basketball. But you got to like the effort. Pirates coming with pressure, which definitely has bothered Champlain Park at times. And have had some turnovers in the backcourt. This time they'll kind of back it off and just play straight. And a man as Kushan to the front court. I think they're just going to say, just get, get the last shot right now. Kushan cut off oh. and a jab loose and the steal. Foster up with it. Time winding down. She'll throw up the runner, no good. And we reach halftime. Park Center closing the half strong, even though that last shot wouldn't fall. And our score at halftime is Park Center 32, Champlain Park 23. We'll have first half highlights and then our second half of basketball here on CCX. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including full sporting events and daily newscasts. To find us, go to the store, search CCX, and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Welcome back here to Park Center High School. We are at halftime of this girls basketball contest between neighboring schools, Champlain Park and Park Center. Pirates leading it by a score of 32 to 23 as we check out some of the highlights from the opening half of play. And it was an interesting half. We kind of had some ebbs and flows. Park Center getting things going with the long bank there from Foster early as they made some threes. Rebels. Not a lot of fast break points, but this was one where they kind of lost track of Calusa. She got out. This they did well early, too. A couple of back cuts, Tolentino receiving there, getting the layup. But Park Center, Shafa getting the bounce on a three-pointer there. And Alawanle really had a stretch where she was pretty dominant inside as they were just defending her one-on-one. -on -one. And she was more than happy to take advantage. Crushan knocking down. A, that was the only three of the half, in fact, for Champlain Park. Valentino getting the bucket there. Lloyd making a couple of threes uh, almost in a row for Park Center. And you see Alawanle five buckets inside in a total of 12 points to lead the Pirates. And Lloyd a couple of threes, I said, of six. And then uh, balance behind that. Crushan with six. Tolentino with four points to lead the way for Champlain Park. I think Pate's getting in a little foul trouble. Did not help their cause either as she sat for... Uh, the latter part of the first half, and she was, I thought, one of their better players for the first portion of that half. So we'll see the adjustments that both teams make and uh, come out with our second half of basketball. Park Center 32, Champlain Park 23. We'll be right back.
And welcome back here to Park Center. Miriam Alawanle having a strong first half to help the Pirates to a 32-23 lead. And it's set for half number two. And interesting to see, as I said, Patty, the you know what kind of defensive adjustments people are making too. Champlain Park has stayed in with basically a 2-3 zone. At times it's been kind of a, like a matchup, but they're they're switching and, and you know not following cutters and things like that. So to me, that makes it a zone. No, I agree with you. There was a couple times I saw them too where they kind of were playing a, a zone in one and they were shadowing, picked one park center player they were trying to shadow and shut down. Pates does start the second half. The good news is she did get through the half with just two. So, um, you know, coming into a half with only two, I don't think is a, a, a real big deal. Singleton and Alawanle both had two for Park Center and Pates and uh, Hagenbart and Bates all had two for Champlain Park. Alawanle will pass it back out. Diggs getting the start to begin the second half, did not start the game. Drives and dishes and Pates with the block. And then the throw ahead, they didn't see it coming though, and Singleton with the interception. She will step up and fire, she was fouled. Not the kind of foul you want to take there, but uh, that one will go against Belongia. Yeah, that's, you don't want to start out with following her on a three point shot for sure. I think <clears throat> Miriam was kind of surprised when the ball came back to her in there. She just didn't look like she was ready for it. Hmm. Singleton missing the free throw there and then in turn Champlain Park going back up court didn't weren't looking back and yeah. they didn't even see that pass coming. Had a coach on the way that uh, that should be a third free throw coming. She made the second. Had a coach that when we used to run sprints, if you weren't looking, like as in watching for the ball, he would throw the ball at you. <laughs> kind of Made you look. <laughs> way, to, way to make sure that when you're playing a game, you got to expect to pass even if you're uh, sprinting up court. Well, and, and how we always told kids to run up court so they were turning and looking. Get wide, open lanes, you know. Rebels down 11 as they get it in the front court. Pates had it knocked away and then knocked away again. Alawanle to steal. Ahead to Diggs. Layup is good. Some of those could have been a little scary down there watching whether they were to get called for fouls or not. Yeah. There's a foul right there on Foster. A little too eager for. Even though they ultimately ended up winning big in that Armstrong game, I feel like uh, Park Center's done a better job tonight of not fouling nearly as much as they did in that uh, previous game we saw them. Well, that, Although right. it ultimately turned out to be a huge win for them. You're right, there was a lot of fouls in that game we watched. Well, and the thing is, you want your kids to play in intense and you want them to pressure, but under control. You know, if we're playing intense and we're pressuring and we're always taking them to the free throw line, it's not what we want. Kaluza driving the baseline and Krushan went back the other direction. Kaluza picks up Ooh. the dribble, almost had it ripped away. Now it is stolen and digs up there with it. Foster leading the break. Shafa will step up and fire, no good. Ooh. Don't fight over it, you're on the same <laughs> team. Diggs went after it right over her teammate there, and we will get a tie-up. And then it will be Rebel's ball, I think. And I was just going to compliment Diggs for down here because she was on her knee, but she stayed under control, composed, and saw the open teammate. You want to know who's rebounding so you don't rip it out of your own teammate's hands, right? <laughs> Rushan getting the pick from Pates. Blanja will shoot a three. That one's way off and digs the rebound. Digs a little hesitation move and off the glass and good. Wow, showed her burst right there. That was pretty. 15 point lead, biggest of the night for Park Center. This feels like a dangerous spot for Champlain Park. They're, they're in danger of really falling you know, behind to the point where they won't have a chance to come back. Krushan shooting and missing. Singleton leading it back the other way. Belongia another foul. And, and the tempo starting to move the way Park Center likes to play. They're able to push. Watch Diggs here. 
there was where the really nice move came to as the help defense came and she just cut hard inside. Well, this is good to see. Bates is back in. She hurt her ankle in that first half and I certainly didn't think that she was gonna be able to come back. Ooh. And there's Singleton burying a three. 41-23 Pirates. Tolentino had it knocked away, but just gets it back. And here is Bates, who was hurt in that first half, but apparently her ankle feeling well enough to go. Here's Pates. Peace. Partially blocked on that one. Singleton running it back, and I think Grushan will be called for the foul there. Not trending in the right direction for the Rebels right now. <laughs> no, you can see the frustration because I've noticed a few times I'm just kind of trying to get their point across to the referee and it's like, you know, you gotta let that call go. Well, the call's been made, just play. Control what you can control. <clears throat> I haven't seen a player or a coach that's really ever been able to overturn a referee's decision. <laughs> Dump it inside, Elowamle. Foul call on Hagenbart. I think some of, those, some of those posts, that when they get a quicker post in front of them, they think they're upright and they're doing things right, but they either come over or they get them with the body. Elowamle getting it to dig. She traveled, yep. She's got a lot of skill, but they're probably one of the smallest players on the court and caught it just right in the middle of everyone in the lane there and just shuffled their feet. Grushan, kick it over to Bates. Lanja shot fake and this time drives it, no good, but she was fouled. Oh, okay. Going to be the third on Foster. And so Belongia will go to the free throw line. Pretty quiet night for her so far. Three points in that first half. But remember this game was tied 22 all. So that would, uh, by my math, make it a 19 to two run here for Park Center from late in the first half into the second half. Well, Belongia, Belongia ad averages 50, uh, 12 points a game. She had 15 in there in the uh, Osseo game that they just won the other night by two. So she's kind of, she's off her mark. Singleton the drive, no good. Alawanle foul, follows it up and gets the layup to go. And the Pirates continue to uh, excel here, leading by 18. You know, I think she could have almost gotten by with a carry on that one. She just... Hagenbart, strong inside there, kind of bumped Elowanle off her a little bit and then gets the layup to go. Ooh, Diggs gonna launch a long one and it is good. Diggs coming alive in the second half, seven quick points. You know, I think if they keep going to Hagenbart there, I think she can finish. She's starting to look a little more confident, but that's a, that's a shot that she can make and I think she's comfortable with. Valentino fouled by Singleton. Singleton uh, saw an opportunity to go for a steal there and she kind of overcommitted a little bit and got into her body there. This is one where you might not say this is a shot you want to take, but when it goes in, you say, oh yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. We've seen her take a couple of those in the past too and it just, I don't think anything scares her any spot on the floor. No, you gotta play with confidence. And yes. There's no doubt she does that. She is fun to watch, just the different things she can do defensively and offensively out there. Brown knocking it away from Belongia on the drive there, and now Pates will come back into the game here for Champlain Park. Hagenbart will check out. Crushon to inbound here for the Rebels. They need to get some stops. Obviously, they'd like to get their offense going too, but I think first things first, they need to tighten up on D and give themselves at least an opportunity to get back in it. 
Krushan shooting a three, no good, digs a rebound. Digs oh. a drive and dish. Brown was fouled. Tolentino got into her too much with the body there. I think another thing is about Diggs that's fun to watch is she does like to pass the ball to those teammates. She likes to try and find them in spots. <clears throat> Back to Brown off the <laughs> inbound. That was nice. 48-27, Pirates blowing this one open. Pate looking to attack. And in and out with the left hand. Rebound ripped away by Diggs, and boy, Park Center's really owned the boards on both ends. Ooh, a collision there. They're gonna get a blocking Ooh. call on Krushan. I think it's a right call. It maybe seemed kind of late, but I felt like probably a good call. She guessed which direction Diggs was gonna go, and it, eh, that's yeah, close. Yeah. That could have gone either way. And Diggs drove it, and she was moving right into her as she was driving. <coughs> I think it just took him a little time to decide what he was gonna call on that one. Yeah, and it was, it, it was one of those where there's probably too much contact to just make it a no call. Right, right. Diggs gets the free throw to go, and uh, probably everybody that's a Champlain Park fan watching says, what do you mean that was a charge? Uh, and it was close. I, I would have to say it was closer than I thought when I saw that replay there, that when you're the defender there, you want that call. And I know uh, Krushan felt like it probably could have went the other way, but this time it didn't. Second one coming here for Diggs, who after a scoreless first half has already put up nine points now in the second with that made free throw. And Park Center really stretching it open here, 50 to 27. Timeout taken by Coach Phelps on the Champlain Park sideline as they were having trouble getting that ball inbounded. And I think she needs, she wants to talk to her players and just settle them down and say, you know what, you know what you can do, and you know what we're capable of. We just got to settle down, get our play set up, and, and attack. Do what we we're getting pulled out. Let's go back to our game plan. That's a more. Uh, <clears throat> A action coming up for you on the basketball side and also the hockey side here over the next week. On Saturday, an afternoon game, the Maple Grove girls will be hosting Holy Family and then uh, boys basketball on Tuesday night as Osseo hosts Elk River. And a good hockey matchup. Rebels uh, hockey, boys hockey, will be in action against Maple Grove on CCX next Thursday and then a double header Osseo Maple Grove girls and boys uh, next Friday the 19th. So some good matchups ahead here and a lot of District 279 and also Champlain Park Sports we're working in. As you see, Maple Grove and Osseo, the other two teams in the district here along with Park Center. So Champlain Park inbounding in the backcourt. Park Center as they've gone pretty much throughout the game. Full court pressure. Try to throw a double. Tolentino almost threw it away. Now Bates long ahead to Calusa. Oh. Tried to go with the reverse, but Lloyd blocked it. They get it off to Diggs, a three on two. Lloyd will stop and fire a three and hits it again. <laughs> she just feels good tonight. She feels good tonight. Three threes for Lloyd in not all that much court time. And it's all park center. And you know, you watched them bringing the ball up last time and it was like kind of crazy out of control, but they find each other even when they're out of control a little bit. High up here, and it will be Park Center ball, I believe. Yeah. Brown, as you see, Lloyd having her feet squared up and ready. I'll tell you what, too, teammates are much more likely to give you the ball the next time when it goes in, too. I mean, it's just that general feeling like, I have confidence she's going to make it now. One, well, my stats say Lloyd averages 2.3 points per game, and she is just having a night tonight. Oops. Missed there, Amari Johnson, number two, who's checked in for Park Center. Knocked away, and it's going to be a foul against the Pirates as they didn't allow Pates a shot.
Champlain Park really needs to make the op opportunities at the line count for them, though. They need to get some points that way. And Pates will get it to drop. She had a couple early buckets, but then foul trouble seems to kind of taken her rhythm away, and they really struggle to get back in it now. Digs the rebound after the second free throw is missed. Oops, dangerous one there, and Jackson jumps in to steal it. Jackson all the way for the layup. It's like that time at that time of the game, that cross court pass isn't necessary, and and so a lot of times I say you got to look at that one. That's a long one. That's an easy one to pick off. Let's. Oh, the clock clocks went, went off. Out. Oh, there they are. Well, they went out again. Yeah, a little trouble with the, uh, that's the good thing. Boy, back in the old days, those clocks would reset back to zero and you'd have to check with the book, you know, what the score was. And But now these at least come back to where they were when they come back on. Well, and the tough thing, I think over there, all the cords are right under the table and you got all these people on their feet and I suppose bump them and I don't know. Diggs being hounded by Kershawn. Kept the dribble alive and ends up winning in the battle and lays it in. Grushan wants the ball back against Diggs, who gave her a little point in, after scoring on her last time. Grushan into Pates, off balance, missed it. Joy Linagechi, number 34, is in for Park Center. And that shot won't drop. Ogechi missing. Diggs. Grushan jumping back out. It's going to be out off of Diggs. You know what? I think they have the. Now they look at that drive by Diggs as she's able to finish it. And you know what? 34 is Holman out there. I think you're right. There's one thing wrong in here at 34. Okay, Holman. I think that is Holman if we look again. I think they had that problem last time too. I'll have to look and see. But Pirates really blowing this one open. But you know, you think back to fairly late in the first half, it was a very tight game, but uh, Champlain Park has only scored eight points since then and they are Kind of getting blown out right now. It's 11 minutes to go. Yeah, that's 34 is Holman. Oh. Cross court there and pull up, bounces around and drops. That cross cart almost got picked off again, too. Lloyd able to get a non three pointer to go that time. Lonja will inbound here for the Rebels. He gets it into Crucian, and she'll look to push She's it up court. Up. Drives it all the way, no good. Lonja the rebound and scores it. Diggs in and out with that one and batted around Talentino. Her pass deflected by Diggs. And then Johnson was tripped. You know, if I'm Park Center, I want my kids to keep playing with their intensity, but I want them to understand what we have at the clock and what kind of shots we should be taking right now. Johnson to the free throw line here for Park Center, no good. <laughs> 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 
Kushan looking to drive it, misses that one. Foster open at the top, and that one in and out. And rebound by Jackson. Tolentino working her way into the front court. Alonja picked up the dribble. Oh, just got it across to Jackson. Trying to go inside, but good hustle there by Lloyd and gets the steal, but then we'll get a tie up. <laughs> And I think that's what Coach Coley's telling, trying to tell his team right now. Calm down. Just, just secure the ball. Do what we know what to do. We don't have to push. We don't have to rush. Great effort on that steal here by Lloyd. Yeah, and then it was just kind of bobbled on the catch try there by Amari Johnson. I think Amari, as she caught it, she was looking where she was going to go and really didn't secure it first. And I like the idea. You want to know where you go, where your people are, but secure that ball first. The thing Park Center's got to be aware of is Champa Park still has shooters. I mean, it's, it, Park Center has a good lead, but we still have nine and a half minutes of this game to play, and you need to take care of the ball if you're Park Center and, and just keep your intensity up on defense if you're Champlin. Shafa drives and finishes there. Saw the lane open up and went for it. Park Center has done a good job lately of attacking the seams well. Lonja from the wing, way short. Krushan grabs the rebound and scores. First basket of the second half for her. Singleton the drive. Ooh, and is fouled as she falls hard there. Well, we got Park Center in the one on one right now, too. <laughs> Tolentino will pick up the foul. There's a look at it. Yeah, definite. Bump there. Singleton short with that free throw. Latuni Agunli in for Champlain Park. And Singleton misses them both. And it'll be a tie-up. It'll stay with Park Center. Park Center is going to take a timeout here. 8.58 to go and a 59-34 lead for the Pirates. And trying to get their sixth win of the season. And well, you, you can just kind of see things starting to fall into place for this team. Uh, you know, after a slow start for them this year, they're I mean, get down by the end of the year. They're not necessarily a team that people want to see at playoff time, I don't think. I, well, I agree with you, and, and the exciting part for them is they are so young and how they're learning their roles and playing in, and you know, and I think that's a big thing. I think the thing coach is probably talking to him about right now, we got to take care of the ball, run our stuff. We are quick, we want to push, we want to attack, but under control and take the right shots. And, you know, if you're Champlin, you want to just, like you said earlier, let's get some stops. You know, make get a good possession, move the ball, get, get our shot off, and then let's play some good defense and get some more stops because we know they're capable of it. Be a baseline inbound play for Park Center as Shafa inbound. Rebels throw a quick double on Sanders in the corner, and they're going to use another timeout. <coughs> Yeah, when you you do that and you can't get it in, and you get trapped right there. You gotta you gotta figure out what am I gonna do because they're gonna come trap me in those corners and 
I don't think she had the room where she wanted to bounce it off their leg. I think she was looking to try that, but she, they, they applied a very nice trap on her that time. I always hated it when, when you're, you're going to inbounds, your team has to inbounds, and you're just down in that corner where you get the ball. Especially in a gym like this, where yeah. it feels like there's not very much room. Foster will inbound it for Park Center. They really took command of this one late in the first half, and we're up by nine at halftime and have only increased it from there. Well, mm. they lost it, and Prushan sending it ahead, but it was lost by Nagunli. I couldn't control that one. I think Naomi would, Naomi would like to have that one back because she just started making her move before she knew where she was going with the ball that time. Foster into the front court. Little runner, that one is way off. She's able to save it. Krushan up with it the other way. Nice pass to the corner. Belanja knocks down a three. Good look that time for Krushan. Gonna get a foul on a Gunley. A little bit of a trip. And there's where Champlin, if they can get their team going and get that shot, that's her shot out there. Um, but also, you, you got to get back on defense for both teams. And I think that was one thing that Champlin took advantage of that last time. Foster gets the free throw to roll around her fourth point of the night. Diggs will come back in. And makes a pair right there. Oh, look at. They forget about Agunle for the moment. She drives it no good. See who touched this one last. Off Park Center will be Champlin Park ball. Kendall Jackson back in here for Champlin Park. Lost the handle, but gets it back. Now Krushan going into Hagenbart. Krushan will step up and shoot that three, and oh. she banks it in. It was a very early in the game. We saw Park Center bank one from a similar spot. Well, and I'm seeing Champlin be a little more patient on offense, too, you know, trying to get the ball to Belongia. And then Naomi last time took advantage of that shot. Foster open down the baseline and gets it to drop. Didn't get to the point of using the backboard like maybe a, you'd wanted to see, but. And it, stop here, I think the Foster was a little shaken up, so she's gonna check out. She came down on that foot a little wrong, it looked like. Oh yeah, she kind of stepped on the toe of uh, Hageman, I think, when she came down. Krushan bringing it in the front court here. Shafa defending her. And was fouled. I know Naomi likes that to be able to drive and attack the bucket, and I know she's looking for those opportunities. Free throw is good. 12 points now for Naomi. But her team down big here, 7.20 to go. She's been solid at the line here tonight. Diggs into the front court here for Park Center. 
I liked how Diggs did that. She came down to attack and then just settled down and let's like work our offense. Holman knocking down the three there. That's another little secret weapon Park Center has because when she comes in, she can hit some threes. Oh, yeah. Off the glass, no good, but we get a foul as Pates will go to the line. She did, Mariah did a great job that time of catching the ball and keeping up and moving to the basket, drawing that foul. There, yeah. She just made a good move and kept the ball up there. What you want your post to do in that situation is get over to that spot, get there, but don't go up in the air with her. No good again. Good battle, but it's held off of Champlin Park. Oh, he called it white ball. Oh. He pointed the other way, I thought, in the beginning and then called it white. Yeah, you're right. So inbound here for Tolentino. Ooh, deflected by Diggs. And she runs oh. it down and saves it. That was that was Great a heads up. There. And heads up. So Diggs will inbound it there after making another play. Diggs getting a pick and then dumps it off. Oh, missed it. She gets the ball right back, though, and then draws a foul. So she wasn't able to finish the first one, but then stuck with it and grabs it away and gets fouled. In and out there. And banking this one in and out. Actually looked like she tried to bank it. You, you know, I agree with you on that. I do agree. Okay, it bounced around, didn't go in. I'll just try it this way. And nice drive and finish. Shugunley able to get her first bucket. Diggs will stop and pop a three, and it's money. Diggs has been big here in the second half. 70 to 44, Park Center. Shugunley trying to make it two in a row. This time no good. Singleton ahead and Diggs all alone for two more. Timeout Champlin Park as they are seeing Park Center pull away again here, 72-44. So look at Diggs getting her feet set, popping that three. And then getting out running ahead of the pack this time it's just you're so alone you want to make sure you don't uh, <laughs> think about it too much and nobody's just lay it me. in yeah nobody's near me i just got to go finish my layup well and i love the heads up of her teammate too to see her and get the ball out in front so all she had to do is go pick it up and put it in Again, you, you're telling your kids if you're Park Center, play our game, but be smart with our possessions. And Champlin, it's just like, let's move the ball. Move the ball, get our good shot. And rebounding, I mean, that was one of the things too. Rebounding, coach wanted to improve on rebounding with this. They needed to rebound and take care of the ball.
Vonja will inbound in the backcourt here for the Rebels. Tolentino had it raked away by Singleton. It'll stay with Champlin Park. Tolentino gets it back from Pates. Lange will shoot the three. It's too strong. Tolentino the miss, and then Agunle was fouled. Yeah, I think that's. Holman will pick up the foul. Second one also no good. Singleton had the rebound, but then is tied up. Will be Park center ball. Diggs wants to throw it deep and hits Shafa in stride for the layup. Boy, that was a really well thrown ball. She could be a quarterback. <laughs> yes. Oh, and they try it the other way. Landra trying to bounce a pass over. It's going to be a turnover on the Rebels. Shafa getting it over to Diggs. She's feeling it that time short. And then they had a rebound and into the front court for Champlain Park. Belongia cutting baseline, but they couldn't connect on the feed there. Another turnover. Got to believe we're not keeping track, but they got to be at least into the 20s in turnovers. Yeah. Champlin, or excuse me, Park Center making wholesale changes here. Lloyd will come back in. Foster, Sanders, Johnson. Brown getting that pass away to Foster. Rounds open from the top, and she will nail a three. Another strength to look at at this team is their depth. As they, everybody who's played, it seems like has contributed at least something. Lloyd, that time will pass up a three. Sanders, an open look, it wouldn't go. Hagenbart wins the battle for the rebound. Now Tolentino. Dumped inside, Hagenbart, turnaround try here, won't go. Boy, it just shows you how different things can be in a basketball. Watching this game right now, it seems kind of hard to believe that Champlain Park won the first meeting, but yeah, it yeah. was a, a different night and the teams have made different strides since then. Well, definitely right now, it, it, Champlain Park's just, they're trying to be aggressive and get the ball, but yeah, they're committing follows, putting Park Center back at the line too. Foster to shoot it. I mean, it is actually, as we watch the transition and the game go on, it's, it's turning into how Park Center likes to play. They like to push, they like to attack, but, oh, that was wide open one for her. Lanja open ahead of the field and gets the layup. Park Center just didn't even see her sitting back there. She stuck back there on the free throw and nobody picked her up. Brown will shoot a three and nails another. Hannes Brown now with 10 points. Grushan attacking, no good. Get a foul call on Johnson it looks like.
Kushan nails another free throw. Stanford coming back in for Champlin Park. Kaluza also and Jackson. In and out on the second one. So 80 to 47 Park Center lead. Not quite in running time, but close. And no good, but Foster was fouled. Who'd they call that one on? Kushan will okay. pick up her fourth, it looks like. She is really working. I think the, the rivalry with her old team, I think, is kind of coming into play. She's mm -hmm. been really trying very hard. <laughs> yeah. Foster makes a pair. So 82-47 lead. Bates driving it and then lost it. It was his last touch though by Park Center. And referee notifying the score table that it is running time at 35 point margin. That's really Restarted the clock. Travel there out top. <coughs> Brown will inbound. Foster the drive, <laughs> scoops the layup up in the Shoot. end. That was nice. I mean, she just kept on going. 15, we are car into the lineup here for Champlain Park. Oh, she almost stumbled there. It looked like shuffle step, but. Yeah, I think with this score, you're probably a little less likely to see yep. that called. <laughs> yep. Foster the rebound. She's gonna stop and pop and oh. hit. Boy, they're feeling confident right now, and not just a couple players either. Right, they're just, they're all feeling their touch. Looks like we got a wholesale change coming for Park Center the next whistle. Bates, it was knocked away, they get it back. Flipped up there, no good. Foster the rebound. And she was fouled. You know, you want your kids to keep playing hard, and you, you really don't want the frustration fouls right now. You just keep playing defense the way we've been working on it. I mean, forget about the score right now, because, yeah, it is where it is right now. But we, we got to finish strong, play our game, and keep fighting. Foster at the free throw line. Makes it. They stopped the clock, which is interesting. Foster makes a pair, 16 for her now. call there as Jackson caught it and was trying to go up court. Yeah, they are in one and one, so. <clears throat> Jackson's free throw, no good. Rebound by Singleton. And then deflect it out. It'll be Pirates ball as we tick down toward a minute to go here. I'm gonna hit 90 again perhaps here as they did the last time we saw them against Armstrong. Singleton a miss and was fouled. Bates will be called for the foul. <laughs> 
So Singleton to the free throw line. And makes the second to put him at an even 90. It's like Park Center, don't make a foul right now, coach is saying. It's just Ahead to Diggs. She will circle it back out. Park Center, boy, talk about turning the tables from the first meeting. They are gonna roll to a 90 to 47 win here tonight. So what was interesting is the buzzer hadn't gone off. There was a few seconds left. The Park Center girl handed the Champlin girl the ball and she started walking with it. And the ref just kind of looked and was like, okay, I won't call anything. <laughs> Which really, I mean, they both were conceited. It was, the game was over, but it was kind of interesting to see that. So the Pirates win for the sixth time this season. Now six and eight and four and four in conference play as an impressive outing here as they blow Champlin Park out. Final score here, Park Center 90 and Champlin Park 47. Thanks so much for joining us for girls basketball here on CCX Sports.